Hi guys, welcome to this quick and easy guide for those who want to know about the NHS COVID app's essential features. So let's get straight to it. I am using iOS 14 on the iPhone SE first generation. Yes, I do know that I need to upgrade, but I am too tight. First thing you need to make sure that you do is to download it from the App Store or the Android Store for Android users. Then once it appears, open it. So you'll first be greeted by some text which gives you some information about the features of this app. So we'll skip this for now as we'll talk about this later in the video. Scroll to the bottom and hit continue. You'd be asked if you're over 16 because the virus only affects people who are only 16. I'm joking. So I'm going to select I'm over 16 to continue. The next screen tells you a little bit of information about how the app works. So to save you reading, I'll just tell you. If you test positive, you can put the test results into the app and it will alert other people who have this app to self-isolate. The app stores exposure data, so information about the smartphone's exposure and time duration with other smartphones for 14 days. And it stores venue check-in data for 21 days, both of which you can delete at any time. So once you're done here at the bottom, hit I agree. And then on the next screen, you will only need to enter the first part of your postcode. So, for example, if your postcode is RG202JN, you will only need to enter RJ20. Then hit continue. On the next screen, you will be asked to allow contact tracing. This means that the app will use your Bluetooth to track your exposure to other smartphones and for how long. So, you need to hit continue. Then enable. Then allow notifications so that it can notify you if you do come near someone who has tested positive. First thing we see is the welcome screen. So you will see your postcode and this cool green emitting graphic showing that it is doing contact tracing. This also shows you the alert level of your local area. The first thing we'll look at is how to check into a venue. So let's select venue check-in, allow it to access our camera, and then we should see our camera with this text telling us to scan an official NHS QR code. So if you go to say a restaurant, you'll need to scan the unique QR which looks like this. The app will give you a notification to tell you that you've checked in with the time and it will be recorded on the app. That's it, nothing else for you to do. So now if you or someone else has a positive test result, the track and trace system will automatically notify everyone else who has checked into that venue at the same time. I have put a link in the video description down below showing you the list of venues that require you to check in. The next thing that we will look at is the check symptoms option. So if we go into check symptoms, you will now have three tick boxes for each main symptom. You can select any combination of these at once. So if I can't smell those onions that I'm chopping, I'd select change to your sense of taste or smell, then hit continue. It will then ask me to review my answers so that I can add or review symptoms if the symptoms change their mind. Then choose a date or say I don't remember. Then I can hit submit. Now this will do a few things. Firstly, it will tell you to self isolate and to book a coronavirus test via the app. Secondly, it will send the first half of your postcode to the Joint Biosecurity Centre. This is to help the NHS track where the virus may be spreading and get an early insight into potential hotspots. So it's worth noting at this point that it won't actually alert people that you've come into contact with just yet. On this occasion, thankfully I don't have any symptoms, so I'll just cancel and head back to the welcome screen. Next is read latest advice. So if we open this up, this just opens up the internet browser and takes you straight to the gov website and it shows you a load of information which is constantly changing so you can have a read through this if you struggle to sleep one night. The next option we have here is about this app. If we go into this just give you some details about how this app works and how it collects data. In short it doesn't or it rather shouldn't collect your personal data. All it uses is the app, phone model and operating system. Logs and stores data about who you've come into contact with and for how long, as well as venue check-in data, which you can delete at any time. The next section is test result. So if you do experience symptoms and then book a test, as mentioned earlier, you will be given a test code with your results, which you can enter into this part of the app. 
You will either be given a positive, negative or unclear, void, borderline or inconclusive result. Once you put this into the app, you'll either have to isolate, not isolate or you'll be asked to rebook a test. I'll put another link in the video description which takes you straight to the NHS website. This gives you a very detailed explanation as to what each result means. So the last option we have here is contact tracing. So this button allows you to toggle between turning it on or off. I usually turn it off at home because I found that it does drain the battery a bit quicker. And also there's no point, I'm not going to catch anything when I'm sat at home, am I? So for this feature to work, we do need to make sure that our exposure notifications are switched on. If we exit the NHS app and then open settings, then scroll down until we find exposure notifications. So here we have a few options. If we select view exposures and app, it basically opens the NHS app again, which we don't need to do because we've already talked about it. So if we exit that and go back to settings and exposure notifications, See here, we also have something called exposure logging status. We need to make sure that it says that it's active with a green tick. If we select this, go into it, we now have two options, which are to view exposure checks or delete exposure log. If we go into exposure checks, we'll need our touch or face ID to get in. And here we can see uh, the record of exposures at the top. You can check out more details, which just looks like a load of rubbish that I don't understand. And below that we have two options which are to either export or delete these exposure checks. It's worth noting that these are deleted automatically after 14 days. So going back to the main menu, you can see here that it shows your active region. So if we go into this, you'll see that you can either select the active region or we can add another region, say if you go to another country. So on this occasion we won't do that. If we go into active region, you'll see a description about the region and here you have to make sure that set as active region is selected. So if the text is greyed out like it is here, then it's fine. If we scroll down here, you will see that you've got the option of turning on or off, share exposure information and share travel status. Think of this as you giving or not giving the NHS app permission to access your phone's data for track and trace. If we go all the way back to the main menu again, and scroll down, you've got this share a diagnosis in NHS COVID-19 app. All this does is just, as the name suggests, open the app again. So we'll go back. At the bottom here, you've got two toggle buttons. So the first one is monthly update, which just reminds you that the app's working. And also you've got availability alerts, which just allows you to receive notifications if the NHS app's notifications are turned on. You can also turn all exposure notifications off and this will delete all exposure data too if you want to. That's all I've got for you guys. If you have any questions or comments feel free to post it down below. If you like this video then hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more tips and reviews about everything.